Hello, so here in front of me I have a CSV file with a few users. And here I have a Ruby on Rails application that doesn't have any users. And I want to import the users from the CSV file into our Rails application. Now, we'll not have to use any additional gems for this because the Ruby language has an inbuilt CSV processor. So we're going to use the CSV processor to upload and process the data from CSV and store these users in our Rails database. Now, here I already have a small Rails application where I have just an index action to view the list of users and, uh, well, I render each user. Now there are no users to render. So let's start by adding a field where we can uh, uh, upload a file with uh, users. So I'm going to go to our users index and I'm going to add a form. I will say equals form with, then there is going to be a URL. We'll need to add the URL. Uh, so let's go to our roots. And here we have our resources users. I will say do, then collection do. Now we are going to have a post action, so post uh, import. And this will generate a path for import users path. Now the method here was post, so method post and do form. Let's close the form. And we're going to have a file field. I will say equals form dot file field. And we'll name it, let's say, just file. And we'll have a submit button. So it will be form dot button uh, submit or import. Let's see what this looks like. So I will refresh. Here I have this choose a file, no file selected, and the import button. Okay, looks nice. Let's see if it works. So uh, I'll click choose file. I will select, okay, you see at the moment I can select a few different file formats. Let's try selecting the XLS version of the file, not the CSV one, and click import. And what happens? Well, it just processes the request because the request itself is uh, uh, absent in the controller. So let's add the def import to the controller. And uh, let's uh, put a debugger here. So we are using the gem uh, debug by default in the Ruby on Rails uh, 7 application. So we can use binding.b to see what's happening inside this request. Let's uh, try choosing a file again. Again, I'll select, let's say the XLS file click import and we are in the binding. Let's see params. Okay, let's say params file. So the content type is uh, application OC something stream. Okay, I don't like that. We want to say it uh, so that we can ex accept only CSV files in this uh, action. So let's continue. And here I will say, uh, we will return redirect to users path notice uh, only csv please if params file dot uh, you see we have this content type uh, is not csv but how does the CSV file look in this kind of content type uh, for this action dispatch? Let's uh, see. I will again comment this out and try actually importing a CSV file. So click import, let's say params file. Okay, so the type is text CSV. Let's add this uh, here. So return uh, unless this is a text CSV. Okay, let's see if this works. I will uh, click continue and uh, let's select another kind of file. Let's select XLS, click, and you see it says only CSV, please. I click CSV, import, and uh, it kind of processed the request, but there was no template found because uh, we didn't have uh, any other action to do. So let's add uh, a final redirect. If we actually manage to do something, let's say uh, users imported. Let's see if it works. I will uh, try selecting a CSV file, click 
click import and it says users imported. Now we didn't process the CSV, so of course no users were imported yet. Okay, now let's actually make it so that inside the file field we cannot add anything except CSV. So to do that we can just add the option of uh, accept and the dot CSV. Let's see. I cannot select any file except of CSV. So we've added the validation for CSV both on the front end and on the back end. Now, if we didn't add this validation on the front end, we could just go to inspect element, remove this accept uh, CSV thing, and uh, anybody could try to import another kind of file and uh, break our controller action. So we want to add validations both on the back end and on the front end. Now, going further, let's uh, try uh, looking at the CSV file that we uh, have here. So we will return the binding and to not to say params file each time. Let's say just file and let's say file equals params file. Okay, so now when we upload the CSV, we'll go into the binding. Let's uh, click upload CSV, import, and we are in the binding. So let's have a look at the file. What does it look like? So it is kind of a file. And uh, how can we process this uh, file? Let's say uh, file equals file dot open file. So we try to kind of uh, generate a URL for this file. And uh, based on uh, having this URL, we can uh, use this Ruby CSV theme. Now, how can we initialize the CSV? Let's try saying CSV and that it works. It doesn't work. So let's say require CSV. And now I will say CSV and it works. Okay. And now let's try to pass this file via CSV. So I will say CSV equals uh, CSV dot pass uh, file. So the file that we have opened and you see we have some kind of data. So we have extracted some data. Okay. It already looks good. Let's uh, try adding this to our uh, code. So I will say file equals file.open file. Then I'm going to say uh, CSV equals CSV pass file. And uh, yeah, let's click continue. Okay, now uh, when passing a CSV, we can pass uh, in a few options. So we want to say that uh, we have headers and we want to say that the row, oh, that the column separator is uh, this, because by default it is a comma, but in the file that we have provided, it is uh, this semicolon. So let's try passing, uh, adding a few parameters. I would say headers true. And let's have a look at the result of this uh, CSV. Let's uh, once again go back, upload a CSV, click import, and let's say CSV. What do we have? So you see, it is a CSV object with uh, a few rows. Uh, uh, let's uh, have a look at CSV.headers. Okay, and you see, it gives us the first uh, uh, column, so the headers. So looks uh, okay, but uh, you see, it didn't find the uh, each of these as a separate uh, column. Let's try adding uh, the column separator. So I would say col sep would be a semicolon. Let's click continue and see what will happen if we add the semicolon. So I will click choose file once again. Let's say CSV, csv.headers. And you see each of them is separate. So it found each header as a separate uh, object, but not just as a plain string as it was before. Okay, and now let's have a look at the CSV rows. Let's say CSV dot uh, each do uh, row and print row. Okay, and you see here we have each row. Let's say each row dot to hash. So you see now it is like a, a header, a body of the row, header, body of the row. And if we make it to hash, it looks more like a, a Ruby code. Okay, looks quite nice. Let's add this uh, to our 
code. So we are going to get each row of the CSV. Let's say CSV uh, dot each do row and print row. Let's put the binding inside this row and see what happens. So continue. Let's go back and import the file once again. And let's have a look at an individual row. Let's say row. So here we have row, row dot to hash. Okay, let's try to find just the like uh, value of the first name in the row. Let's say row. I will say first name. And we have a value. Okay, so good. We have all the data that we need to construct a, a user object. So how can we do it? I would do it uh, this way. I would create a new hash. I would say user hash equals hash new. Or you can say just uh, empty braces. It's the same. And let's uh, try to find the uh, first name of the user. So let's say user hash. And we would have uh, what do we have in the database? We have uh, name. So name will equal row first name. Let's see if it works. I'll create a new user hash. Okay, I will say user hash name equals first name. Okay, and we can do this same thing for all the other fields. So you see, the fields that we have in the CSV file don't necessarily have to uh, have the same names as the fields in uh, as the fields in our database. And now we are going to map the fields that we send in the CSV file to the fields that we have in the database, so that they match correctly. And that we can so that we can import this particular file format. So let's see what fields do we have here. We have uh, username, email, name, surname, phone, and preferences. Here we have first name. So first name is going to be name. Then we have last name. It is going to be surname. Let's say uh, user hash surname will be last name. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's say user hash. What do we have stored here? So we have a name and a surname. Let's do the same for email. We have uh, email address. So let's say email will be email address. Then we have uh, favorite food. Let favorite food be the preferences and what else do we have we've mapped uh, uh, email name surname preferences and we still need to map the phone so phone will be mobile phone number And we have the username. Now, in this case, uh, we don't pass the username, but we are going to construct it from the user's email. So uh, we will say user hash username uh, equals, we are going to construct it from the email. So let's try constructing the uh, username from the email. Let's say row email address dot split at dot first. And you see the username by default is going to be the first part of the email. So let's add this. And let's do it if uh, the row email address is uh, present. So if row email address dot present. Okay. And based on uh, this user hash, we can uh, actually create a user. So uh, let's try doing it uh, in the next action. I will... Uh, Click continue. Okay, let's quit and start the server once again. And what do we have here? So we construct the user hash and then we can just say user.create based on the user hash. And uh, let's try doing this. So I will uh, refresh, I will click CSV file, I will click import. Okay. And here I have this initialized constant CSV. Yeah, because I didn't require CSV in uh, this controller. So uh, the controller just doesn't know that we need to pass this Ruby CSV. I will just say require CSV on top of the file. 
and uh, do everything once again. So again, I click the CSV to import and you see the users have been imported. This is that simple. Now, just to clean up the code a bit, I think it would be good to extract this kind of code that uh, process users into a separate service. So uh, I would go to our app folder and create a new folder named services. And here I would create a service name, something like uh, uh, new file, uh, CSV, import users, service. Uh, so CSV, import users, service, dot RB. Here I would say class CSV import user service. And, and here I would have a method def call. I will pass in a file. And uh, I would move the logic from the controller to the service. So I would move this require CSV to the service. And uh, so here I pass the file. All this logic is going out of the controller into the service. And uh, I need to call the service somehow. So I'm going to say, uh, so here I will say CSV import service dot new dot call and I'm going to pass in the file. Okay, let's see if this uh, works. So uh, I've created the service, I've uh, yeah, looks quite good. Let's uh, delete all the users and try once again. I will say Rails C user dot delete all quit Rails server. Okay, let's try once again. I will click CSV import and it works. So works great, and uh, I think the great learning of this episode uh, regarding CSV is that we can uh, kind of actually match the fields uh, that we want uh, from the CSV to the fields that we actually have in our database. And uh, we've also extracted all this logic from the controller to a separate service where it is self-contained and uh, you can test it more easily. So that's about it. Thanks for being with me. Goodbye.